This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Well, I've been doing uh, tutorials on Maya since uh, 2014, and I realized that I never did a video on the Hypershade. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that in Maya 2017. And that said, let's jump in. Here we go. Okay guys, well as mentioned in the introduction, we're going to look at the Hypershade in Maya 2017. And uh, for that we need an object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple polygon cube. I'm going to hit R and I'm going to scale that up. Okay. Now immediately when I create this cube, you can see that it has a gray color by default. Okay. Now if I hit 4 on my keyboard, you will see the wireframe. If I hit 5 on my keyboard, I see the shaded version. Um, so by default, what Maya does is applies a standard uh, material to your object. And that material is called a Lambert. Okay? And a Lambert is a non-reflective material that uh, is built in into Maya. Okay? So if you don't apply anything else, this will be applied. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of tweak the material that we want applied to this cube. And we can do that in our Hypershade, okay? So I'm going to go up to this blue ball up here, and when we click on that, we will get a bunch of windows here, and we'll try to fit everything so we can kind of see it. I'll just make our cube a little bit smaller here, and we'll size this up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So what do we have going on here? Well, at the top in this menu, we have a bunch of icons that represent things that are present in our scene. So if we had lights or cameras or materials, they would all be set up here. Now, these are our defaults. And here we don't see a lot going on and here uh, neither because we haven't applied anything yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right in here. And this is kind of our options. And we are going to type in LAM for Lambert. And we're going to select a new Lambert. Now, once we do that, a bunch of things happen. First of all, in our node window, you see nodes being built. And I'll get to that in a minute. And then up here, we see this big ball that is kind of a preview mode for our material. So once we tweak settings in our material, we will see them represented up here. And then once we're satisfied, we can apply that to our object. Okay. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name to test material one. And uh, let's see, I'm going to click on the color because I want to change that. So I'm going to click on this color bar here and let's make this green. Okay, good. So what else can we do here? We can, for example, change the transparency by pulling on that slider even until it's completely transparent. You can tweak the ambient color. So that pretty much um, makes these dark areas, these shading in the corners and so forth. Okay. So by pushing that more towards white, you're losing that until you lose it completely. Okay. Now let's say you are creating a material that uh, specifically um, needs to look like cloth, for example. Right now we have our shader ball, but what if you want to see something in cloth to see how that responds? Or what if, let's say, you are creating water? Okay, uh, I'll just change this to blue just to give you an idea. There we go, right? Okay, so you can change all that. Now, one thing that comes to mind here is that the number of settings that you can change are fairly limited in a Lambert material. But if we were to select a different type of material, that would change. Okay, so let's go in and let's say we're going to select a blend. All right, we're going to click on that. We're going to add that to our scene. Let's go back to our shader ball here. And suddenly, instead of just the common settings, we now also have the specular shading settings. Okay, so I'll change this to the same green, for example. And then I'm going to go in here and let's change the specular color. Let's say we do blue. Let's see what happens. So this reflection that's going on here on the ball, which was white, now is blue. Okay. I'll put it back in white. There we go. And you can 
for example, decide whether you want that to be kind of pinpointed or very widespread, like so. You can tweak the specular roll-off, which is kind of to a certain point the in uh, intensity. If you bring it way down, you can hardly see it. Uh, we have the reflectivity in general. Do you want it to be a very reflective material or not? Now in this case, our balloon material by default is a very reflective material. Here you have the uh, reflective color that you can change and so forth, all right? So now that we have these options, we need to consider whether we always should use a Blin or a Lambert. Well, let's say you are going to use a very specific renderer or a render engine. Some of them are activated by plugins in Maya, like uh, Mental Ray. But since Maya 2017, uh, Arnold is the default, okay? So if that's the case, you would want to apply Arnold textures, right, or shaders, like surface shaders, instead of the Blin or Lambert, okay? Because that will fit better when you render them out. Okay, so we have applied this material. We, um, this is called Blin 1. Let's call this Test 2. And let's apply that to our cube, okay? So we are going to select our cube. We're gonna go up here, we're gonna right click, assign material to selection. Okay, so that is all there is to it. There are a lot more options here, which are a bit further than the basics. Let's say you want to put in a specific texture in the color. You could hit this little swatch here, select file, and go in and select a folder and select an external file, like a, a brick wall, wood texture, and so forth, okay? So that's a quick introduction to the Hypershade in Maya 2017. Hopefully it was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. And thank you guys for watching. Bye.